Four reels, sends across three $15,000 jackpots. Do you have any idea what the odds are? Shoot, it's gotta be in the millions, maybe more. Three fucking jackpots in 20 minutes? Why didn't you pull the machines? Why didn't you call me? Well, it happened so quick. Three guys won. I didn't have a chance to call oh, you. you see the scam? You didn't see what was going on? Well, there's no way to determine that. Yes, Sam. there is. An infallible way. They won. Hi. Robert De Niro, John Bloom, Casino. One of Martin Scorsese's great movies. Why am I showing you this? It's obvious. The casino was hacked. <laughs> all the identity management everything that we put in place is completely ineffective when if as is alleged the teenage hackers uh, for it is believed that these are a group of very young hackers um simply found someone on LinkedIn who they recognized was the an IT person at MGM Grand and uh, phoned him up and pretended to be uh, admin and got him to reveal his credentials, which we don't know what those credentials were, but uh, I'm, we're assuming that they were some kind of username and password. After that, they simply uh, got in uh, to his account and then wreaked havoc, um, literally uh, across the casino, the MGM casino group. MGM, of course, is, is, um, is huge in Vegas. It owns probably like 10 resorts down there, all, all sort of clustered around one end of the strip. Um, the the losses from the MGM hack are said to be something like between eight and ten million dollars a day. Whether any money was paid in the end, we don't know if no money was paid in the end. We don't know how much it actually cost the company. We, it's all speculation from newspaper reports and uh, video sources, etc. But let's go back to how they one thing that seems to be clear is how the attackers got in using vishing, which is a horrible word uh, based on phishing, which is an also a horrible word, um, but is like a lot of things in cyber has stuck, uh, which basically means attackers fish for information or they fool you into thinking that you're logging into something which you're not or um, in this case talking to someone who is not actually your administrator look how it, they literally just rang someone up and he or she gave them their credentials and that was it that's all they needed and once they were in they then did the usual thing which is search around and start uh, messing around with systems and shutting them down that's all it took. So name one identity and access management system, one privilege access management system. In fact, name any kind of cyber security or identity and access management system that could stop that. It brings into question fundamentally of how we approach identity and how we approach access and crucially how we approach authentication. I've been saying to myself quite a lot recently because I spend a lot of time on my own thinking about stuff and I keep this phrase keeps going over and over in my head which is identify the identity which sounds like overkill it sounds like a silly thing and i thought it was but it actually it sounds a bit like verify you know don't trust always verify but until we can identify the identity in this case let's call it uh joe smith was the identity 
that was being used. Until we get to a point where we, for any attempted access from any identity, if we put the identification of that identity before we do anything else, we might actually start to stop this type of ransomware attack. Because clearly the credentials, and I'm sure that MGM would have had a huge amount of um, software um, in, in place uh, and identity and access management systems. We do know that they used Okta um, as an identity provider. Disclaimer, I am no way suggesting Okta was at fault for this activity, um, but I'm just saying that it, you know it shows that MGM used conventional bits of software for protecting their systems and for processing identity. But when that identity looks like the real thing, feels like the real thing, doesn't necessarily come from where the real thing usually comes from, which is important. But is accessing requests to something which is also normal or has happened before. Chances are that most systems will process that request and allow the identity through. Because the thing is, all our PAM systems, all our identity access managements are based on verifying an identity, but not verifying whether that identity is actually being used by the right person or machine. And all it takes is for someone to give away quite happily over the phone. Uh, you know, can, can you tell us, uh, sorry, we're just doing a check here. We just quick need to check your, uh, update your password or something. Can you tell me that? Yeah, I got it. And you go. So um, how can we fix this? One thing that um, also I, I should have said, we don't know if there were any two factor involved in this, and, um, which would have, would might may have stopped it. But, but we all know that what's happening every day to day in business, especially one like this, is that uh, everything happens very quick, and, and you know, uh, there's a lot of trust uh, maybe misplaced, built up into transactions. So anyway, I've, I've just put on screen here. Like, um, uh, this is from a guy called Rob Domain, uh, and it's it's a, some good uh, tips here on uh, lessons from the MGM hack, uh, which I'm not going to read out, but I'll put a link down uh, below. Um, but obviously there are a lot of things you, you could do now, like IP address, allow listing, um, admin activity, monitoring, um, user and device validation. All this stuff is obviously uh, very good advice. And, um, um, you know, is the IP a trusted source? Does the user and device match, etc.? cetera, uh, which is probably getting closer to, to the kind of system that we need um, so that uh, an automated or maybe AI driven red flag would immediately stop, not just alert, but stop a access um, when user and device don't match. Um, because unless, unless you somehow steal someone's device and then log in from that, um, that would actually stop some of this. It would stop uh, a straightforward uh, credential based attack uh, from going ahead. Um, and then he, he goes on to talk about, um, you know, um, hunt for suspicious activity. The thing is, and, and again, more about social media policies and employee training, and blah, 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 um, all good stuff. The, the point is that um, all of that is a huge amount of work and very complicated, and it still doesn't really 
um, remove the fundamental problem of identifying the identity. So that is the story of the MGM grant, um, which is either cost the company huge amounts of money, but at least they didn't give in or they did give in and spend some money, but either way, it's cost a lot of money. Um, the, the real lesson is, of course, that even our best identity systems will fail when an attacker gets hold of legitimate credentials. And this is as simple as that. Um, all the stuff that I was talking about, what Rob Domain was talking about in his piece on LinkedIn is great, but it's hugely complicated. Imagine then if we could build that into some kind of instant check within our systems. All of that could be done in that amount of time. That's what we need to get to. We need to identify the identity, then we verify. So it's kind of an exemption of zero trust. Let's call it zero trust plus, perhaps. Um, but it's more than that. It's actually also uh, engineering systems so that they are secure and convenient, because that's the other thing. MGM clearly has hundreds of technical employees. It can't afford to go through a lengthy authentication process each time one of these guys needs access or one of these guys is asked, wants to get elevated access or privileged access. So we're getting there. Things are, are changing, uh, but the one lesson, the biggest lesson from the MGM is that cyber attackers don't need really anything more sophisticated than a convincing voice, a phone number, and possibly um, most crucial information is someone's LinkedIn profile. So the first tip is probably don't put your phone number on your LinkedIn, or at least, and don't give out too much information about what you do. I say all that, but then in LinkedIn is is a basically a career development platform, or it was, or it used to be, or should be. Um, and of course, people are going to put on what they do for a living because they want to show off about it. So. Again, we can't blame the culture. We can't blame people, but we can blame ourselves for putting too much faith into identity and access management as it is. Okay, so that's MGM, the story of the casino. I'll see you next time. Bye.